Thank you. Father, we thank you for, for Pastor tonight and the message that is uh, about to be brought to us. Just help us to cast it all. And that's a great, that'll be a great beginning of 2013. We well, thank you in Christ's name. Amen. We are preparing, or we are in the stage of uh, preparation for the African conferences in different directions. And when you think of all of the things that uh, are like the little children of the conference, um, he will tell you more. You can be a little bit like that. But of late, one verse have taught me to be of myself. Before we come to that verse, New Year Day, something awesome happened. Uh, Christmas Day, we spent the day at uh, Latasha's house. Every food in the world, oh my God, was in that house. <laughs> and every time in this uh, country, when I go to a program, I break my rules of eating. <laughs> and when I got here, I was warned. Watch what you eat, Pastor Alfred. I'm not going to say a hat so she can't hear me. But every time I go, we go to their house, I break my rules because, oh my God, every food in the world is there. Adrian wasn't in town. She went, she went to spend the uh, Christmas with her family, so most of the food, few of the food weren't there. They, they promised me that when Adrian comes, it will be another thing. So I was expecting to get a call or a text from Adrian that I'm in town. You can come and make it up. <laughs> so New Year Day in the morning, I decided to go running to exercise and burn up some of the calories because I knew that I was going to put on a lot. However, I didn't get a call, neither did I get a text message. But I still went running, which was good. But I saw something that I like to share with this great group of people. I am running, and I, in a cold, it's cold. And, I, and, and there stands a man in a cold river. I'm running. I came on the bridge, and I saw a man standing there and uh, acting like he's fishing. But a lot, a lot of things were going on with him. And I said, wait a minute. So I stood on the bridge, jogging in place, trying to gather what's going on. In his one hand was a cup of coffee. In his other hand, the most uh, helpful two fingers of his left hand that was supposed to be uh, supporting the, uh, the hole. He got a cigarette between them. And then he's on the phone with a Bluetooth in his ear. I mean, talking not as a fisherman is talking. Because I am from Africa, and our great-great-grandparents started feeding on the fishes and the animals in the bush so much that there are not much fishes in the water anymore. And then our grandparents came and they started feeding on the rivers and the bushes. And our parents came and they started feeding on And we were born and we started feeding on the rivers. There ain't much fish or fishes in the water anymore. So when you go to fish, you go to fish and hunt with your might. You got to be dead quiet before you can have a tiny thing to come on your hole. To see your man here doing it the right opposite of what we are going to do in Africa, I said, I'm going to stand here and see him hook out the first fish out of the water. <laughs> but it didn't happen anyway while I was there, so I continued burning my calories. 
until I return, he had, he had not caught anything. Because there were a lot of things going on around him that needed to be cast down before he can settle down for the catch. And as we enter into the year 2013, my friends, I am so excited that we have the Bible. I'm so excited that we have God's Word. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, after telling his readers to clothe themselves with humility and to become humble, so that in a due time, the Lord will exalt them. The apostle did something. The apostle pens down one of the most thought-provoking and peace-providing verse ever in the Bible, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. And in there it says, cast all your cares on him, for he cares. In my 16 to 7 years of being under training to pastor people and to plant churches, this is one of the areas I have failed the most. Trying to be what I am not meant to be in the lives of people. Trying to be Superman, because I love the people that I pastor, and I love everyone, you know, that I come in touch with. And this is one of the most areas that I have felt. And so, most of us sitting here have run to this verse in times of trouble, uncountable amount of times. And most of us sitting here have quoted these verses to loved ones, to family members, to our children, and to many people we can't even remember who were in desperation. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares. Well, on our devotion this morning, during our devotion this morning on the table, I'm speaking to my wife, plus of four years old, and a six years old. And I said to them, this is what I want to say to you this year. As we start 2013, I said to them, unless, unless we can experience, or unless we can meet the conditions of First Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, we are never going to claim the promises of verse 7 this year. I said that to my wife and my two little babies. I have failed too many times in that area in trying to be the superman in my own situations and in other people's situations that I love very much, and I have come to a failure. And I have come to a place where I now believe, and I believe stronger than I used to do before, that the Lord is the only person on the, on the universe that is able to carry whatever you have on your mind, where you sit and where I stand. Without any doubt, I've tried it, and I am a testimony. Carrying it causes a lot of problems, like we see in the world today. You're not going to move from here to that door with your cares. We're not going to go any considerable directions or any considerable amount of time with our cares because they are not meant for us to carry. The burden bearer is the Lord Jesus, and he is in heaven, and he watches over us. And it's amazing how he has done this for many people, and it's amazing how he can do it for those of us who are following him today. Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. I love these verses. 
The word of God says there, come unto me, all ye that are labor, and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 3, it is the ones, the believers, who cast their cares on the Lord that he refers to as his yoke fellow. And I want to be God's yoke fellow this year. What is most important than becoming his yoke fellow? I asked my family this morning, I said, if it is possible, this is what we should pray for this year. That when you go to bed, you go to bed with the last thing on your mind being Jesus Christ. And when you wake up in the morning, the first thing on your mind should be Jesus. That is another way of casting your cares on him. And he is going to take care of the rest of it during the day. I don't know how much I can emphasize this, but I do know, my friends, that everywhere in the world today is full of cares and burdens. When you go to school, you want to run from cares and burdens. When you go to work, oh my God, you want to run from cares and burdens. Everywhere you step today. And when you think you're going home to go rest, you're going to kids and you're going to your grandkids, you're going to meet up with a lot of cares and burdens. It's just everywhere. So much that we can't hide from it. But what's the way out? Go to bed with the last thought being my walk with Christ. Come from sleep with the first thought being my walk with Christ. And leaving the rest of it with Christ. This is the reason I'm excited. I'm a part of such a great group of people like yourself. This church is full of life. When I came into America, I came with a whole lot of plans for my church. I said, yeah. And I even came with the plan of the church, the blueprint of, of the church after I have come to America and gather all the goods. I just discovered today I, I haven't been able to do the first one, which is the smallest one. And if, if I'm not careful, that's one thing that is going to burn me. But I'm learning every day to cast it all on him. And every time in my walk with Christ, the moment I start to cast it on him, it starts to happen like a joke. It just starts happening like, like it's joking, but it's happening. It has happened in many occasions in just a few months. Tonight, the Lord is there for us. Somebody may promise and say, if you have a problem, just give me a call. Before you look, that person drop to, drops tomorrow. How many times people have ever told us those kinds of things? And when it was, real time, it was really time for us to turn to them, they weren't there anymore. Even though they were sitting there and breathing, but they just weren't there for that anymore. And we turned to Christ, and we got an answer. This verse is a reality for me as I enter into 2013. I have tried on my own for too long, and I haven't gotten anywhere. But I can remember in the twinkle little things in my walk with Christ, every time I try to take it on my own, that's when I fail miserably. But every time I try to give it unto him, they happen like miracles. My prayer this year is that I will go to bed with Christ's name, the last name on my mind, wake up from sleep with Christ's name, the first name on my mind. And just walk with Christ and leave the rest to him. And relax in him, come to church, listen to the word of God, and see what the Lord will do. I'm going to take life 
one moment at a time. Just one birth at a time and see what the next time is going to bring. Pray for us as we are in a stage of preparation to go to Africa. We intend to go with Pastor Matthew from Liberia to Sierra Leone, the long-awaited missions uh, to take off and Pastor Steve, God's willing, and to see how that church can take off in the next, uh, in, a very few, in a very, very short uh, uh, time to come. And so just we thank you and we cover your prayers in this area. And just pray with us that uh, the conference, which is already a success, is going to be successful in the eyes of the, the word and the non-believers. That people are going to come to Christ and that is going to be an amazing thing. Thanks for being here for us, and thanks for staying together as partners in progress. God bless this time. Father, we just thank you for the message that is about to come. We lift up uh, the messenger to you, and we pray, as you have blessed us already, that you will help us to take the blessing thereof that is about to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, please stand. And, all right, let's pray as we get ready for Pastor Shabelli's message. Lord, we thank you for drawing us together tonight here uh, to receive from you. Uh, we just thank you for the work in Liberia uh, and around the world. We think of things happening, conference season in Africa already beginning. We pray for Pastor Schaller, Pastor Love, Lord, as they travel, Pastor Schaller in Nepal and in India, Lord, and Pastor Love in Russia and Finland. We just thank you for their ministry, Lord. We pray for the conferences that they're a part of for every visitor. All of the uh, messages, Lord, for your uh, ministry in those places that you would really stir people up in the most holy faith. Uh, for tonight, Lord, we just thank you for drawing us together again to hear from your word. We thank you for the truth, uh, the power, Lord, for um, just the ability to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for the call of God, for the finished work and the message of life, Lord. Tonight, be with us, Lord. We ask you to anoint our ears to hear, our hearts to receive. Lord, this message, Lord, from Pastor Shabelli, we ask you, Lord, that it would really change us, transform our hearts, Lord, renew our minds by grace through faith. In your name, amen. You stay standing and turn to Philippians chapter 1. Good evening. Great message, wasn't it? Wasn't that good, Texas, Greg? It was awesome, wasn't it? See that? Even from Texas, you got a yes. Wow. And uh, really, it's great that we have men of God, pastors, Nepal, Bangalore, India, and Bombay, and then on to Russia and Finland, and Pastor Brian's going to Budapest, and wow, it's just incredible. And really, it's all about what Pastor Alpha was saying. It's all about, I was thinking about this word life a lot today certainly based upon New Year's Eve message on being by a well and going over a wall, a well of life. And Philippians chapter 1, just one verse that we always remember that was kind of representing when Pastor Stevens went home to be with the Lord. Philippians 1 verse 21, for to me, read that with me, would you? For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Then chapter 2, verse 16, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain, in vain, holding forth the word of life. Father, thank you for the prayers. I already pray. Bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor Alfred, when he was in 
Ghana after that 17-year war in Liberia, which I don't think, I think you told me this correctly, you didn't come out of the house for like 11 years just to find food and then go back in. And uh, they lived in, we had two bathrooms we had constructed and the bathrooms were not as important as dormitory space. So how many of you lived in the two bathrooms? 19 people lived in two bathrooms. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, wow, I don't, even, I don't even know. Built bunk beds up the sides of the walls, right? And it was really something. And they slept in, on benches in the church. And you can only do that, and you can only raise children, raise a family in this day and age, work a job if you are experiencing the life of God. And that's Zoe life. When we talk about life so often, when people are talking about life as we hear all the time in this world, they're talking about biological life. People have experienced so much of biological life that when they meet somebody with Zoe life, they think it's very strange. Life that God has. And they just look at it and they can't even imagine what would have to take place for them to receive it when it's a free gift. But they really, they have no idea about Zoe life, the life of God. This is the life of God. So how important it is that when we look at our lives and the events in our daily lives that we enter in and we have a receptivity and we are at a well where we are receiving the very life of God. I was reading a story about a man who had a congregation of 3,000 people. And one Sunday morning, a young lady, about 22 years old, with her father, walked down the middle of the aisle and took a baby and put the baby on the pulpit. And they turned around and they said to the congregation, this is the fruit of the pastor's whoredom. Can you imagine that? He picked up the baby, walked off the stage, and he went home. And uh, never said a word. And so uh, years went by and, and whatnot, and uh, the church started to uh, maybe lost a 1,000 people or so. And uh, he just never said a word about anything. So one day, the father and the, and the daughter came to the elders and the deacons of the church, and they said it was all a lie and a fabrication. And it never did happen. So the, all the deacons and elders, they went to the pastor. They said, listen, why didn't you say something? And this is what he said, you mean to say she's not my darling? Are you meaning to say that I can't keep her after all these years of raising her? And so they drew him back and they brought him back to the church and the church tripled in size. Now to have that take place would take, what would you call that, the what of God? The life of God? That's the life of God, to be able to have that happen and then walk away with the baby and never say a word to anybody, never defend himself. And you could say, well, that's crazy. He should have done this and done that. But God led him to say nothing, and it was an opportunity for the church to be transformed. And what took place in the church? The very life of God. And when you think about how much takes place in my life and in uh, the lives of believers in this world that takes place in their life without Zoe life. And you can see why people are really not drawn to Christianity because Christianity is a life. I was reading today 67 times in the writings of John the word Zoe life is used. 67 times. He talks about in him was life and the life was the light of men. And then in chapter 3, eternal life, about seven times. Chapter 4, the water of life. Chapter uh, you know, 6, uh, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, the bread of life, the water of life. I mean, I am the resurrection and the life. You can have abundant life. All of his writings in all of the Gospel of John and the epistle of First John and Second John and Revelation is all about the life of God. Something had happened to this man that transformed him. And by the way, if, if you have ever read, and I'm sure you have, about James and John, he called them Boanerges, sons of thunder. That means they had a little bit of a temper. They could get a little bit wild. Ever happened to anybody? I'm looking right at you. No. <laughs> I mean, they could get a little bit crazy. Sons 
of thunder. And they were ambitious people. Can we have the seat on the right and the left in glory? Now, it's obvious to me that if there's the Father and the Son and the Spirit, they, the two of them wanted to dis displace somebody. They, had, they wanted somebody to move. Right? They wanted left and right. Well, left and right, I mean, you know, somebody's there, either the Spirit's there, what's going on here? They were ambitious. They were prejudiced. They were prejudiced. Let's kill the Samaritans for not receiving you. Wow. That's really great. You know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to what? To save them. What are you talking about? You know not what manner, the quality, the type of spiritual life you are of. What are you doing? What are you, what are you thinking? Then they were exclusive. See that guy over there? Casting out devils in your name? He's not with us. Stop him. You know, exclusivity is a dangerous thing. He said he's not against us. He's for us. Let him alone. He's, he's casting out devils in my name. Hello, you want to let him go? You know, church you belong to, you know. Unbelievable. There was a transformation. That, that transformation came with God's life, right? It's only God's life that can transform an individual. When we saw the skits the other night, that Mark 5, I mean, Mark 5 is an amazing portion of the Scripture. You got a demoniac with 6,600 demons. How'd you like to meet him on a bad day? Huh? How'd you like to meet him on a bad day? You know? We once saw a guy one time that had an axe in his head and he was living. The axe was right in his head. I'm like, <clears throat> goodbye. Um, I mean, you got a headache? You want a Tylenol or something? <laughs> what the heck are you up to, you know? Craziest things, you know? 6,600 demons, and he's in a cemetery. I used to like cemeteries because the police would never come in. <laughs> Every time I did something I wasn't supposed to, I ran to the cemetery. And I was never coming in there. Father, forgive me. By the way, Paul told this story, Acts 9, Acts 22, and Acts 26, in case you think I'm going into the past and it's wrong. Okay? Life of God came in and the demons went out. Right? Gone. Woman with an issue of blood for 12 years spent all of her money on many physicians and got worse. Sorry if you're a doctor, and I believe in doctors, believe me. It, was, it wasn't a basketball player that took my hip out. It was a doctor. He did happen to have a saw, though. You know, he said, by the way, did you know we sawed your hip out? I'm like, he didn't tell me that when we were starting out this thing. Yeah, we just cut, and then we... He said, that was a tough one to come out, too. Saw. Can you imagine that? What are you, a carpenter? I went to the therapist today. I said, you know, why is it that you 105-pound therapist can cause so much pain? Pull the leg, like, I'm like, it doesn't go any farther. She goes, what's the matter? Does that hurt? I'm like... God loves you. <laughs> wow. My God. No? So I went seven years to inflict this pain on you. Seven years of college. I'm like, <laughs> seven years to inflict pain. That's amazing. <laughs> Life of God changed this woman, right? She just did what? She touched his garment, and what happened? The life of God dried up the issue of blood. The life of God raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. The life of God met the woman at the well and transformed her. The apostles were in town looking for subs, sandwiches, something to eat. Right? They were like, let's leave them here. We got, I'm, I'm starving. Leave Jesus alone. Let's go. I'm starving to death. You can imagine what that scene was like. Why couldn't one of them have gotten gone and gotten the sandwiches? No, they all had to go and leave him alone. She went to town and won the whole town to Christ, right? That's the what? The life of God. 
And that's so amazing. The life of God. What they experience in Liberia, what people experience, it's the life of God. Raise children without the life of God. That's like a living hell. Sorry to use that word, but it's in the Bible. Go to work at your, in, in, at your job. Without the life of God, what is it? It's a biological mess. Without the life of God. Wake up every day and face hours and hours of just the test and the atmosphere and what's going on without the life of God? It's incredible. God has given us this amazing source at the well of his life. David, you know, I love what Abigail said to David in 1 Samuel chapter, I think it's 25 or 26, verse 28 and 29. And she told David, don't you worry about my husband. God will take care of him. But your life, David, is bound up in a living bundle with the Lord your God. And he'll sling out your enemies. You got any enemies? Old sin nature, life of God takes care of that at the cross. Devil and demons, life of God takes care of the devil and demons. World system that comes against you, life of God handles that. And how many people today, even Christians, are trying to face biological situations and circumstances in this world and are going to every source but the life of God? I'll figure this out. We ran a Christian counseling center for years. We had, my brother and I had a thousand clients a year and we both went insane. <laughs> now, how'd you like to talk to a, uh, like every single, like say 250 days a year, talk to four psychotic, neurotic, suicide people, man, men that think they're women, women that think they're men, a guy that thought he was in a boat and he was just standing there looking at me. You know, I mean, uh, absolute, uh, I mean, craziness. Every day, a woman came to me one time, and all she ever talked about, I'm going to kill myself, I'm going to kill myself, I'm going to kill myself. So one time she came to the office, and we were on the sixth floor. I, went, I opened the window and got on the ledge. She came in the office. She says, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking your advice. I said, you said this so much, I think I'm going to do it. Maybe there's something in it. Get back in here, are you crazy? I said, now I got you, sister. Now I got you. Life of God. Life of God. Zoe life. And here's a marriage, and maybe there's like, you know, a little bit of tension. Anybody ever had any tension in a relationship? Huh? How do we handle it? Well, I'm going to look at a book. I'm going to go to the nearest television program. I'm going to go to my computer and go on. I'm going to, is it, is it, what are you, you Google? Is it Google? Guggle, Google, Giggle? Huh? I'm going to Google how to handle a situation like this. That's really a lot of life. Life of God in, the, in our relationship. The life of God. That's what does it. I mean, think about this. My wife's father died. This is this little story. And uh, she was almost having a nervous breakdown. So I was on like my seventh to tenth day of using cocaine without sleeping. So I went to her, didn't know what to do, I had no idea, married, didn't know what to do. So I read her the Bible for three days and she got saved. Unbelieving dope addict. Reads the Bible and life of God converts her. Are you listening? Huh? Then guess what? Life of God prays through her and I get saved. I wonder what it's going to take to get saved. Well, I don't know. I'm reading something I don't even believe. As soon as I'm done and she gets converted, I go right back to doing what I always do. No life of God, right? But boy, when you meet the life of God, amen? I mean, there's power in the life of God. There's authority in the life of God. The life of God. Satan fears the life of God. Sunday morning, I'm going, to preach, I'm going to speak a message about how love takes care of fear. Goodbye, notes. Love takes care of fear, and, and uh, grace delivers from anxiety. We're going to talk about grace versus anxiety on Sunday morning. Anxiety. P. 
kills Valium. Letting my mind go in so many directions, overdosing on TV and computers. And the real reason is I have anxiety attacks. I can't take it. So I got to do something to relieve it. Of course, I'm not God. Oh, yeah, no. Life of God. 67 times in his epistles, he's talking about life. And Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. For you are dead, and your life is what? Hid with Christ in God. My life is hid. Your life is hid. That means Satan cannot get at you. What do you think it means when the Bible says the wicked one touches me not? It means he cannot, the word is haptomei. He can never manipulate you out of your position. You got the life of God, amen? Well, uh, my son is dead. Yeah, I'm going to send my servant, Gehazi, with the staff. She doesn't even move. Let him go with your staff. I'm staying with you. I'm staying with you, Elisha. He goes in there like a good servant, lays the staff right on the dead body. Nothing! Hallelujah. She's still with Elisha. She doesn't even go with the guy to see her son, you know. She's still with Elisha. He goes, and what does he do? Eyeball to eyeball. This is kind of funny, but, you know, that's how it was. Eye to eye, mouth to mouth, hand to hand. Lies on the body. And the body is revived. That's called what? Life of God, right? That's life of God, John 11. I am the resurrection and the life. Your brother shall rise again. Oh, she's a theological Bible college genius. I know he'll rise again on the last day. I am the resurrection and the what? Life. He who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Life of God. Here comes Lazarus. Out now. Imagine that. Out now. Life of God. He comes out of the tomb. That's incredible. Life of God. Life of God takes away drug addiction. Life of God takes away anxiety and fear. Life of God gives me a purpose in this life. I was uh, writing down some contrasts. I don't know what I did with them. They're probably on that paper down there, which I was told by my therapist not to bend down because you're not supposed to. Take that, 105-pound therapist. <laughs> I'm sorry. The grace life or the self life? The word life or human reason life? Faith life or sight life? Mercy life or sin life? Spirit life or religious life? Body life or world life? Agape life or human love life, eternal life or temporal life, new man life or old man life, fruit life or works life, gospel life or current events life, heaven life or hell life. Life of God. I want the life of God. We have it. But to experience it every moment of every day, I took a look when I was on stage, New Year's night, and I said, Pastor Shalom and Pastor Love, you're both going? <laughs> you're both going over? I went like that. They're both going. And I started to get anxious. They're both going. <laughs> They're both going? They're both going. Well, what about... Uh, and I went... <laughs> Quiet yourself down. <laughs> Be still and know that He is God. Life of God, right? Life of God. Psalm 42. The soul is, is what? There's five, six conditions of the soul. It's panting, it's thirsting, it's poured out, it's cast down, it's disquieted, and it's mourning. That soul that David is speaking about in Psalm 42, six very horrifying conditions of the soul, what solves that problem? Life of God. Amen? Zoe life. How's your life going? It's eternal. I mean, how's it going? It's, good. it's awesome. You know, I, I love this. I love, I love to meet people. And, and I love them, but I, I, can't, I hate this statement. How's it going? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> what the heck does that mean? 
you're hanging in there? Like, I'm sorry, you're hanging in there? What is that statement? I'm, hang I'm hanging in. You know what? Stand on top. Don't hang in anything, right? Life of God, right? Those men are bringing life of God to Nepal. Life of God to India. They're going to meet life of God. Iran needs life of God. Pakistan has life of God, right? West Baltimore, where are you? Life of God, right? We've got life. And you know what? I don't have to think about what's going on. What's the results? How many are getting saved? How many disciples? What's happening? I got the life of God. None of that really matters. I'm experiencing God's life. Hello? That's awesome. It's abundant life, isn't it? I am come that you might have Zoe life and have it more what? Abundantly. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now watch this. Experientially, do what? Steal the word, kill off the life of the spirit experientially, and destroy the fruit. I am come that you might have what? Life. Life. Bartimaeus, life. Zacchaeus, life. It's awesome. You sin, there's life of mercy. You're weak, there's the life of the strength of God's grace. You don't know what to do. And what do I do in my biological life? I've got eternal life. If I fellowship with it, I just might find out what God has. Bible college and it's awesome. Get ready if you've never gone before. It's starting when, Pastor Aiden? January what? January 14th. Come to a Bible school that has life. Life. There's a lot of things I want to do in Christianity. I just don't know how Bible school fits in. Well, if it doesn't fit in, you're never going to experience and give out life. By the way, Dr. Stevens said years ago, you can only take a person as far as you've been yourself. That's an interesting statement. Bible college. Life, right? Well, I don't want to go to Bible school. I've got, I've got a lot of education. No, it's life. It's life. It's what it is. I don't know. What do you think it is? Well, exam uh, no, it's life. Experience life and you have no problem. You'll fly right by with all A's. Amen? Yeah, I Bible school. It's life. That's what I love. You experienced life in Bible school, right, right, Pastor Alfred? It was the life of God, even with 19 people living in a bathroom. That's life. <laughs> you go through a test in a trial. What's going what's gonna to do it? Analyzing the test. Huh? Evaluating the trial or experiencing God's life in it. Amen? Right in it. The life of God. I met a man who was a 17-year heroin addict. He was the best thief in Massachusetts. This guy was the top. I mean, he used to go into big department stores, put on a uniform, and walk out with 80 suits. Oh, he was the best. I've never, and, I, and I worked in prisons, three prisons, for 10 years. This guy was the best. He came to my office one day. I said, he said, uh, uh, I don't know what to do. I said, life? You need to get saved. Well, he had just gotten a 10-year sentence, and he was awaiting, like, the time to go. And his mother, who knew me and for, for years, came crying, save my son, save my son, don't let him go to jail, this will kill him. I prayed, and God said, let him go to jail. I could have got him out, too. God said, let him go to jail. He went to jail and, and got born again. He had a religious experience, but he wasn't saved. He got saved in jail, came out of jail. He became a Bible study leader in jail, came out and began to work in the Life House. That's the name of the place that we had, a Life House. We had 14 of the worst criminals you could ever find in your life. All converted, saved, born again. He's married now with three kids. It's amazing. His sons are on fire for God. What does that? Life. I don't care what situation, trial, problem, test, sin, difficulty, finances, health, sickness. We got the life of God. Are you with me? Are you listening? 
Cancer can't take the life of God. Life of God is eternal. This temporal. Biologically, I can lose a hip. Big deal. You're not taking out with a saw eternal life. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. So awesome. We've got the life of God. It's in Christ. And it's freely given to us. And God is saying, oh, just fellowship with that life. Enjoy that life. I don't seem to like be having a good time. Yes, you're not having a good time in bios life. But if you just receive and fellowship with Zoe, eternal life, Aeanos Zoe, you will find out that everything that takes place will be something of great joy, contentment, and peace. How's it going? Yeah, well... You really want to hear? No, I don't want to hear. Unless you'll listen to me about life. Wow. 99-year-old woman, they said to her, what's the key to how you live 99 years? She said, keep breathing. <laughs> She's 99. She says, the key is just keep breathing. And the key for us is keep receiving experientially the life of God. Amen? Trial, life of God. Difficulty, life of God. Failure, life of God. Take us through it, right? And everything, the life, no customers at the, at the car place that you work at trying to sell cars. You got the life of God, right? That's okay. We can run through a troop and leap over a wall. I don't just sit back and say, oh, that sounds like a good message. We go out there and the tire is flat. What the heck happened here, you know? And, you know, it's the life of God, right? Amen. By the way, remember that picture of my van? I'm closing. Remember that picture of my van? Well, my wife went down a hill. One time I, t I told her never to drive that van, ever. She drove it once and the brakes went. Because she had to get something for sauce. She was missing one article for sauce that she was making for somebody. She, she went down and went down the thing. She hit the curb and the van hit a huge tree. Not a dent in the van. We noticed two nights ago, the tree is dead, gone. They took it out. <laughs> Life of God! <laughs> Life of God! It's awesome. I got the life of God. You can't take it. You can take, I got one eye that works. I got one ear that works. I got one hip that's gone. I got the life of God. It's awesome. I'm in a church where there's life. We've got a body where there's life. We got the life of God. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't know what's going on out there, and I don't really care to know that much. I just know one thing. I'm here, and you're here, and we got the life of God. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you tonight. Thank you. Let's, let's pray with the life of God. We thank you tonight. If you are here and you've never received the life of God, boy, are you missing something. Knock it off and get saved. Come on. You need to be born again. There's a heaven life or the hell life. Heaven life is Zoe life. Hell life is hell with biological life still existing. We can say yes to God this morning, this, this evening, whatever day it is. I don't know. Day, time. None of it matters. Say, Jesus, save me. I want to be born again. You're on the internet? Just say, yes, God. There's thousands of people that watch on the internet. I don't know who you are, where you are, what you're doing, what your name is, what country you're in, what your problem is, and I don't care. Life of God can deliver you. Say, Jesus, give me your life tonight. The life of Christ. For me to live is Christ. The very life of God. It's abundant life. Zoe life. That's your prayer. Eyes closed, heads bowed. Just put your hand up. Jesus, save me tonight. I want to be born again. There's two people. Thank you. On the internet, I'm talking to you tonight. Coming at, we're coming at you. Talking to you tonight. Life of God. You died tonight without Christ. You, you are, you're lost. Life of God can save you in a second. It's not church. It's not religion. It's not baptism. It's not works. It's not tithing. It's, it's life of God. Keeping the law, it's the life of God, freely given. Life of God. We thank you tonight. Life of God. Zoe life. It's a word of life. 
It's the faith life. It's the grace life. It's the mercy life. It's the fruit-bearing life. It's the eternal life. It's the body life. It's the life of God. And what a privilege we have. Let's not live under our privileges. And let's not go out of here like with the same attitudes and any kind of habits. Let's say, life of God. I got the life of God. He who has the Son has life. We've got the Son of God tonight. We have life tonight. And it's eternal. This is passing. But this is eternal life. We thank you tonight. Bless our night. Life of God can heal. Life of God can deliver. Life of God can set me free. Life of God can change me. I can't try changing yourself. Good luck. I don't even like those two words. No such thing as good luck. You can't change yourself. It's life of God that changes people. Life of God. Life of God. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. And let's praise God for the life of God. Life of God. Life of God. They, these, they have the life of God. That's what's coming out here. You want this mic? <laughs>